Hello there, and welcome back to the channel. Mad Mike here, and today uh, we're going to be talking about something that I feel is is, is a bit underappreciated, especially uh, among horror fans. And uh, to be honest, I didn't even really know this genre of film existed until probably about five or six years ago. Um, but I I've grown to very much love it uh, since then. And that is uh, Italian horror films. And uh, the Italian horror craze uh, of the 70s and 80s is really, uh, it, it's one of those little like microchasms of just a lot of movies uh, done in a specific genre and they're they're put out almost all at the same time you know they're they're really they're, there's a few outliers from like the early 60s and the early uh from the 60s and like the early 90s uh but for the most part uh, most italian horror movies were in the 70s and 80s and you can they they're very distinct you can kind of you can tell the difference between them uh an italian horror film and an american horror film because a lot of them are very abstract they're not uh these films that they're not as, you know, they're not your straightforward slasher movie, really, at least not a lot of the time, even though they do have a lot of gore and stuff in them. Uh, and really, uh, there's three directors to thank for that. And uh, one of them, uh, which you're, you're seeing right now, is the first one, and he was really the trailblazer, and that is Mario Bava. And uh, for those people that are unfamiliar with Mario Bava's work, he did a lot of uh, films in the 60s and 70s. Uh, and he really was the the forefather of the Italian horror trend. He did films like Black Sunday, which is uh, an extremely good film. You should watch that. Um, Black Sabbath, which actually uh, the band Black Sabbath got their name from the actual film. It's a it's a horror movie, I believe, with three vignettes uh, of horror in it. Uh, and then uh, he, one of his more famous ones was in 1971, which was called uh, A Bay of Blood. And that movie in particular uh, has a lot of forerunners to stuff we would see in the 80s, including uh, a kill uh, very familiar, uh, very similar to uh, a kill in Friday the 13th Part 2, where two lovers are uh, skewered on the, on a, a, through a bed uh, with a spear. Um, and uh, ironically, uh, he did that 10 years before... Uh, Friday the 13th did. Uh, but the, here, here's the thing, is that Mario Bava really was a, a very visual filmmaker, and the stuff that he showed, even the stuff from the 60s, uh, is really, really graphic in a lot of ways. And that was, again, that set the tone for what Italian horror films would become later on. And if you're a gore hound, if you really love gore, and I do, I enjoy gore in my horror movies a lot, uh, if you love it, then you will love Italian horror movies. I guarantee you will. Um, and re really, uh, his stuff at the beginning, especially, uh, you know, Black Sunday, there's a very famous, I mean, uh, yeah, Black Sunday, there's a really, uh, famous scene at the beginning of the movie where there's this, this spiked mask, uh, that's put on this woman who's a witch and it gets hammered into place. You just see blood start spurting and the, the movie is in black and white, uh, cause it was in, I believe the early sixties. Uh, but at the same time, it's still extremely graphic, especially for the time. Um, the only thing that I would say that you have to get used to uh, with Italian horror, and that, this goes for the entire genre, is uh, the dubbing, because many of the actors are uh, do, do not natively speak English, so a lot of their audio is uh, dubbed over, and even the ones that do speak English, usually they'll dub over their own audio. It's very similar to uh, Sergio Leone's Dollars trilogy with Clint Eastwood, where the audio is very obviously put over the scene, and it's, it's dubbed into the scene. It is not uh, organically said uh, during the scene, you can you can tell because you can tell the lips are just a tiny tiny bit off. But you know, if you if that's something that that really bugs you, then you're not going to be able to make it through these movies. But uh, if it's something that that you don't really mind and you can still follow along with the story, then again, I would say check it out if you're a horror fan. Um, but going past Mario Bava, we go into what were the big two in the '80s, which was Dario Argento and Lucio Fulci. And Dario Argento was much bigger in terms of. Uh, his success uh, than Lucio Fulci. He was essentially the the Spielberg of uh, of Italian horror, and uh, I don't use that term lightly. I've seen a many, many, many of Dario Argento's films, and they're all breathtaking to look at, especially Suspiria. Suspiria is probably, I would say, that's probably his strongest film. Um, 
and I'm not going to give too much away on the plot of that movie, but it's a movie you should watch. Uh, they recently did a remake, uh, and again, I would watch the original before I would watch a remake, uh, because Dario Argento is a, is a brilliant director, and that remake is... It's the most colorful horror movie. I mean, sorry, not the remake. The original is the most colorful horror movie I've ever seen in my entire life, but it is still fucked up and terrifying. Um, but that... That that's the thing you have to understand, kind of about Italian horror films is they all of them are extremely gory. They all have these, uh, in terms of just just the way they're constructed, they always have red herrings. They always have everybody is suspicious of you. You're suspicious of every single character of doing something basically, except for maybe the main character. In most cases, they're the only one that really looks or seems innocent, and even then, that sometimes sometimes is not the case. Um, but the again, it's one of those movies that has you guessing until the very end, and some of the endings to these movies are just completely insane. Uh, and the thumbnail that I use here is actually uh, from my favorite Italian horror movie of all time, which is Demons. And that was, even though it was not directed by any by uh, Bava Argento or uh, Fulci, uh, it was direct, actually directed by uh, Lamberto Bava, who is the son of Mario Bava. And uh, Dario Argento helped him write the script and produced it. Uh, but I think that's why that movie is really, really good, uh, is because it definitely has Dario Argento's fingerprints on it, uh, but it has more of a, uh, a modern feel to it. But again, w you don't think that that movie is going to wind up where it is, where, where it goes. You do not think it, it's going to wind up where it ends up going. And if you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. As the, the the climax scene with everything at the very end, you just don't think that's going to happen. And I, the, that that's really kind of how you can describe most Italian horror movies. Is it takes the, usually they will take a hard left turn near the very end. It's kind of like M Night Shyamalan, like oh, what a twist. Except that uh, you know the twist is actually good or at least entertaining in a kind of uh, insane or funny way. Um, but, you know, Dario Argento, he's made a lot of, uh, he, he basically all of these directors got their starts doing uh, these uh, films called giallos. And giallos uh, are essentially Italian murder mystery movies, uh, in, a, in a sense. Um, they, they're very, uh, they're very seedy kind of thriller movies. Uh, some of the really good ones that uh, I've, I've seen done, uh, Tenabre is very good, uh, Deep Red. Uh, which is which is very good, and uh, many many others. Uh, the New York Ripper, which is okay, which is done by Lucio Fulci. Uh, but here's the thing: is that even though they all have gore and they all they all have these kind of through lines, you can see the differences in the directors. Uh, Dario Argento was very married to the idea of a lot of bright colors and kind of old, uh, like 1800s almost type of scenery. Again, a lot of the films were were filmed in Rome. Or uh, you know, in a surrounding general area somewhere, is a lot of places in Italy again because they're Italian-based productions. Um, but really, the films themselves kind of speak for for what they do. And you know, going from Dario Argento over into uh, Lucio Fulci. Lucio Fulci, uh, if again, I said if you were a gorehound, you would like Italian. If you were a gorehound, you will fall in love with Lucio Fulci because he is just he loves gore. You know, the, 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 he'll have a three or four minute gore scene uh, in, in a film, you know, to the point where most people would think it's gratuitous. Uh, and, you know, in, in a lot of ways it is. Um, but, you know, if you watch his movies, it is really, really important that you kind of have a strong stomach. Uh, and he did a lot of, uh, he really got famous for his uh, zombie movies, specifically zombie, uh, the, the movie Zombie, uh, which is actually a... Uh, uh, in name only sequel to uh, George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead, which was released as Zombie overseas, and uh, it, it's it's very complicated. But essentially, a lot of Italian films, uh, especially the lower budgeted ones, in a lot of cases were name only sequels to American films that premiered overseas under different names. So, for instance, uh, Dawn of the Dead, when it premiered overseas, it was called Zombie. So Lucio Fulci then was hired on to make a film called Zombie Two which was supposed to be a basically a name-only sequel. And then that movie got released in the United States under the name 
simply the name Zombie. They dropped the two because it wouldn't make sense because Zombie 1 in the United States is Dawn of the Dead. It can get very, very confusing depending on what movies you're talking about. Uh, but again, it, the the zombie genre, which really worked well for Fulci, you saw him, he did it in Zombie, he did it in City of the Living Dead, uh, he did it in The Beyond, which I think The Beyond, honestly, is probably his best movie by far. Um and in other movies as well, he really had a uh, he he really really had a good grasp on good zombie splatter uh, horror that type of thing. Uh, so you know th those are really the basic three there that you kind of look for if you're looking at Italian horror. There's a few other ones that are sprinkled in there in different places. You have like the cannibal uh, movies, which you know there's a cannibal uh, cannibal holocaust, which is uh, justifiably famous because the uh, director, uh, Lamberto Lindsay, uh, got brought up on uh, charges because they thought that he had murdered his crew or, and uh, that they were, they were all dead in the Amazon. Uh, and he, uh, he had to actually uh, physically produce them uh, to a court in order to not receive murder charges because he, the, the film says that everything that happens in it is 100% is true, even though obviously it, it's a movie and it was fake. It was all completely fake. Uh, except for uh, stock footage that they used of, of real animals and, and stuff like that. Uh, but it was all filmed and it was all fake. Uh, but uh, people thought it was real because, uh, you know, it had a little disclaimer at the beginning and there really wasn't any, like, trace of these people at the time. So he got brought up on charges uh, by the Italian government, uh, which was kind of a, you know, a funny little story. But, uh, you know, other than that, there were a lot of films that were going around back then that just were, they went under the radar. And it, it, it's a shame in many ways, because they are some legitimately great horror films. Uh, you know, like I said before, Suspiria, The Beyond, uh, A Bay of Blood, uh, you know, I, I could name dozens, uh, and I own a lot of them. And uh, it, it, it really is a shame that they go under the radar. And I think people, especially horror fans, should pay more attention to them uh, because you can really open your mind and open your, your uh, tastes up to so many different things by just delving into it. And they're all dubbed in English. It's not like a, you know, it's not like a thing where you got to read subtitles the whole time. Pretty much all of them are dubbed in English because they all had some form of an American release. And really... Uh, and a lot of them actually had American actors in them as well. Uh, so really, if you're a horror fan, look up any of these three directors, look up their work, look up Italian horror films in general, and just start watching and just see what you like. Uh, because, you know, th I think that these genres, sh I think that this specific subgenre should have more people paying attention to it. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll do a director profile on Argento or Fulci or Bava or, or somebody like that uh, in the October or something, something closer to Halloween. Uh, but in, uh, in, in the end, uh, that I think you should really pay more attention, uh, to what this genre has to offer, especially if you're a horror fan, especially if you're a gore hound, uh, and, and especially if you really do enjoy, uh, good storytelling in certain ways and, uh, unexpected twists. Uh, so thank you for listening. Uh, you know, leave in the comments if you've seen some Italian horror movies and which ones you like, or if you'd like to, uh, you know, see any of these films that I've mentioned or check out any of the directors and, uh, hit the like button and hit the bell for notifications. And remember, I live my life free of compromise. Do you? <laughs>